Hello everyone, hope you're all keeping safe and well. Welcome back to the Pink and YouTube channel. My name is Connor Southwell and uh, we're here today because Norwich have announced their, I don't know if we class it as their first signing, but certainly a, a, a signing ahead of the summer transfer window, which opens on the 27th of July. And that is the news that Jacob Sorensen, 22 year old, uh, central midfielder, quite physical, quite strong, quite powerful, has uh, signed from the club from Danish club, uh, Eschberg, uh, who sit bottom of the Superliga, have only recorded four wins this season. are in a bit of a mess in terms of their ownership and, and sporting model in fairness. Um, and Norwich City have swooped to sign the uh, the Danish under-21 international central midfielder. He is um, He's played 117 games for the Danish club, scored eight goals in that time. Uh, and he joins Daniel Sinani, Melvin City and Sam McCallum in signing up ahead of the new season. Um, interestingly, he also played in the Europa League um, prior to um, or, or earlier on this season. But it's, it's been a very difficult season for them, um, Esberg, sort of personally and, and how they've dealt with this season as I said massive ownership issues they're very reliant on loan players they've uh, they even had Reading goalkeeper v uh, Vito Minone on loan at one point um, but uh, it hasn't really helped their season and uh, Norwich have signed um, one of their biggest assets and if you go over to pinkin.com of course you have all the analysis all the reaction to this signing but also there's a, a piece I did with uh, Booster Emil uh, Kierner hopefully I said his name right who is a Danish journalist podcaster and Eschberg fan who gave us the complete lowdown on uh, the midfielder essentially said that he is um, is an all-round midfielder. Essentially, can tackle defensively very strong. Um, aerial, aerial duels are okay. Can shoot from distance. Is is got a little bit of flair about him as well, which is probably quite a rare trait in a defensive midfielder. And what's interesting about this one, really, based on what uh, Booster said, and 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 also on just the the characteristics of this signing, a six-footed midfielder powerful um we're, we're led to believe it's very very interesting because if you think about the style of midfielders that Norwich City have signed under Daniel Farker and Stuart Webber, Mo Leitner, Mario Vrancic, I even chuck Tom Tribal in that category as well to an extent all fairly technical technically proficient um maybe a little bit on the small side but but players capable of perhaps influencing play from deep and not really the natural enforcers or or have that sort of combativeness about them and as we've seen in the Premier League this season and ultimately Norwich City are going to be playing in the Championship Jacob Sorensen or Jakob Sorensen rather is, is going to be playing in the Championship for Norwich City next season is that they've had to rely on almost a two-pronged midfield of Alex Tetty and Kenny McLean and they've almost gone away from that technical base in midfield and, and uh, okay that might be slightly easier to claim once they're back in the Championship and Again, maybe they're dominating games in terms of possession and they're enjoying the lion's share of possession. But equally, if they do, and, and obviously the aspiration is that Norwich City come back at the first attempt um, and they do need a bit more solidity and Alex Tetti will be certainly out of contract next summer. Um, he has said that he's, uh, he's not going to renew that deal and he said it could be his last in football, although we've heard this before from Alex Tetti. Norwich are going to need a younger model and, and it feels like this guy who has said that he's capable of playing as almost like a number six midfielder, that more defensively minded midfielder, also competent as a centre-back. Um, so there's that versatility and flexibility. And he's a defensively minded midfielder. Norwich City don't have too many of those. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is the beginning of a little bit of an overhaul of that midfield, because I've certainly felt watching Norwich City, and I've seen them virtually all their games this season, uh, pre-lockdown and, and certainly all the home games post-lockdown, is... That midfield balance for me quite hasn't quite been right all season. Um, Tetty and McLean, I think, are probably the closest they've got to that. But equally, when they do play those two, I think they lose out the attacking edge. And if they can have, I don't want to describe someone as a box to box midfielder because I think that's probably putting them in a box, so to speak. But um, if they've got an energetic, powerful midfielder who can drive forward, who can support attacks, but is equally very solid and very um, tactically astute in terms of his defensive positioning then I think Norris City are, 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 will be in a really good place. Um, I, I mentioned the other Danes who who, uh, who uh, Sorensen is following in the footsteps of. Steen Niedekard, Jens Bertolaskew, Thomas Helveg, Henrik Mortensen, Jan Molby and uh, David Nielsen. So uh, what's that? He becomes the seventh, eighth uh, Dane to, to, to play for Norwich. And I'll just give you a bit more on, on what uh, Booster said to me today uh, in, in terms of describing him. Again, so he's an all-round reveal, very competent. But he also said he's he's a really calm character. And um, 
It's worth noting as well, Busta is, is fairly close friends with the Sorensen family. He's, he was in the academy alongside Jakob, albeit a, a few years older. Played alongside his brother and also knows his father, who is uh, who is Lars uh, Lungi Sorensen, who was um, head coach of, of Esberg at one point, but also a former player and is quite renowned for his intelligence and how he read the play and, and how commanding he was to an extent. And it seems like that those traits have rubbed off in, onto his son's game as well, which is... Um, which I think is, is a positive thing in terms of what Norwich City need. Maybe a little bit of a calm head. And, and he, he essentially said that he's a very shy, quite reserved character, very professional, very hardworking, very driven. And all these characteristics, for me, tick a lot of boxes in terms of what Norwich City want. They want buy-in to their philosophy. They want complete buy-in to their culture. And they also want complete tactical buy-in to Daniel Farker's ideas. And um, again, Sorensen is someone who to me seems like he's got a little bit of composure about him which in that Norwich City midfield especially in the championship especially the way that Norwich City are going to want to play under Daniel Farker will be critical more interesting was a comparison to Philip Billing who also spent his youth days at Esberg and then was signed by Huddersfield and then Stuart Webber of course came in as sporting director or direct head of football operations or whatever his title was at, at Huddersfield and oversaw his development essentially made him into um, a, a player who he couldn't get out on loan to someone who became very highly rated and he's obviously now playing in the Premier League with Bournemouth um, but uh, he compared him a bit to Philip Billing, a lot of similarities in terms of how they are technically, in terms of how they support the defence and attack, um, in terms of their size and their power as well. I think Billick, Billing is, is probably a few inches taller than, than Sorensen, but nonetheless, in terms of how they assert themselves physically onto games. And really, for me, I mean, I was I was looking on, on Saturday in, in, after the, the defeat to... Um, after the defeat, and, and both the teams were, were having their drinks break. And I mean, the difference in size... From uh, from Norwich City and Burnley was immense, really. Once you took once you took Christoph Zimmerman out of the equation, so I think if Norwich can get a bit more physicality into their midfield, that will serve them well. I think regardless of what division they're in, but combining that um, physicality with technical ability is is also quite a rare mix. So they've they've obviously had to go to Denmark to find that. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see how Sorensen adapts to life in England because that is not a necessarily an easy transition. He's lived in Esberg all his life. Um, as Booster said, he, he, a very shy, reserved character, very calm, very composed, very hardworking, very professional. But equally, probably areas of his game he does need to improve as well. And if Norwich City can get the most out of him and if Norwich City can um, ensure that come next season they've got an aggressive competitive midfielder who's also very technically proficient that's going to be very powerful in the championship I think um, and uh, again he's, he's someone who has scored goals from the defensive midfield position um, eight goals in, in 117 appearances not much but but does chip in on occasion um, he signed on a three-year deal as well so that's a again we, we see Norwich City reward players don't we when they sign with fairly long-term deals this is sort of a I, I think I'll describe it as a mid mid-term deal probably to give them some security if this transfer doesn't work out it's an undisclosed fee but you can't imagine that there is uh, there's there's too big of a fee considering Norwich's reputation under Stuart Webber but equally um, just given the the division and, and the character and, and size of, of Esberg as well um, we've got some interesting quotes that are going to go live on pinken.com tomorrow from Esberg's captain Marcus Halstey who is a Finnish international um, he's played alongside Timu Puki on the international stage. Gives a very good insight, but also there's, uh, which I won't completely spoil for you, you can check that out on pinker.com. Um, come, what day is it today? Monday, Tuesday morning. Um, and there was a player who was at Elsborg who was um, called Andres Dreyer. He, he got a move to Brighton in the Premier League. Uh, didn't make a single appearance for Brighton. Uh, moved in there in 2018. Booster again described him as being probably the best player he's seen in an Esberg shirt. And, and it didn't quite work out for him. He's now ended up with FC Michelin back in Denmark. So that probably does show that actually this is not a guaranteed route for success. There's still a lot of work to do on, J on Jakob's part to ensure that this transfer works out and is successful for all involved. But there you go, Norwich City's technically first signing of the summer, although it's a later window and although we've had Denos and Arnie, Melvin City and, and, and Sam McCallum all in January. Um, Philip Billing is obviously someone who he's been likened to. I think if Norwich City can get anything like um, Philip Billing's qualities out of Jakob Sorensen, then they'll have done 
very, very well. If you like this video, make sure to leave it a like and subscribe. Let us know in the comments as well what you think of the addition. Um, are you pleased with the fact Norwich City have gone out and, and recruited a very powerful midfielder? I anticipate the answer is probably yes. Um, hope you're all keeping safe and well, and uh, we'll see you again very, very soon.